So I am getting ready for bed and I want to allow what is coming through to my heart to come out of me because I cannot take this to bed with me and I feel like somebody else maybe will benefit from hearing this. I want to talk about marital rape. I want to talk about being in relationships and having sex just to try to please your partner and it being a fawn response where I am just going to give in because it's my duty to make sure that you are getting all of your sexual needs met through me. But I am healing complex PTSD. I have sexual trauma, abuse, and many other experiences, traumas, big T, little t, throughout my lifetime and adverse childhood experiences. And I am trying to be sexual with someone who has difficulty feeling their feelings, reading my social cues. Um, so it's constantly in the back of my mind, am I doing that thing where I violate and betray my own self? So the power dynamic that we have existed in that was created by the patriarchy and established through a lot of blood and war um, with the monotheistic religions on the planet. So a lot of women feel like they have to do this because it is their responsibility and duty. And that put a lot of us in a position where we're really just going into an alternate reality or altered version of ourselves to get through it. And if you are energetically sensitive, an empath, highly sensitive person, even the more so, our nervous system is healing from many years of different forms of abuse, including self-abuse, self-betrayal, not speaking up about how we really feel, fawning, being afraid to be abandoned and rejected. And for me personally, I felt like if I don't satisfy my partner, he's going to cheat on me. And if he cheats on me and I'm someone who doesn't really have a strong biological support system, then that leaves me with no one to do this thing called life with. And that alone is a very painful realization. Most of my life, sex was survival. It was either me trying to get a need met quickly and I was willing to ignore how I was really feeling, just trying to get some type of connection and just settling for whatever connection was available to me without really feeling safe in the dynamic with the person I'm having sex with. This is the problem with the patriarchy and this is why I talk about this as much as I do and I'm going to be talking about this shit more because religion calls women to feel as if they are the originators of sin. They are the ones that gave birth to all curses on the planet and on top of that, we're the weaker vessel and if we don't satisfy our partner, the devil is going to get a foothold in our life and he will find it somewhere else. That's a lot to put on the so-called weaker vessel. Let's just say, quote unquote, we are the weaker vessel. That's a lot of responsibility. And that's so painful because how do you say no because you're not feeling safe if you're in a relationship with someone who maybe has their own traumas and this is the way that they cope with it? And when you stop fawning, when you start recovering from codependency, you find your voice, you get more comfortable with speaking up and sharing how you feel, then that may trigger your partner to go into their abandonment wounds and their rejection wounds. And so now as a recovering codependent, intuitive empath, highly sensitive person, neurodivergent, someone with trauma, complex PTSD, PTSD, post-traumatic slave syndrome, somebody who's been abused in any way, any woman who has been touched when she was not asking to be touched. Most of my life, even as a child, I went through this and I went into a state of fawning and freezing to be safe 
And I don't think I ever came out of that. And I did it so much as a maladaptive coping mechanism to what was happening to me that I did not have understanding of to the point where I adopted a personality of fawning, a personality of people pleasing. And this is the danger of codependency when it's not understood, it's not supported, it's not embraced. And sometimes your partner, when you start saying, look, this really does not feel good to me. I, I know I probably initiated or I may have said this or said that, but now that we're in this dynamic, my nervous system is just going crazy. I, I don't feel as emotional connected with you if I, as I would like to. Uh, there are some things that I feel about our dynamic that I'm not quite able to communicate with you in the way where we can reach a resolution. And because those things accumulate, if I was to have sex right now, it would only be to please you. It, it wouldn't be considering my feelings because right now my inner child, she doesn't feel safe. She doesn't feel heard. She doesn't feel embraced. And for a lot of women, sex became a survival tactic. It's just like, okay, I got to avoid being abandoned, being rejected. I got to avoid my partner not wanting to be with me anymore. I got to make sure that I got him a, a couple of servings of sex per week or whatever is expected. And then when you violate yourself that way, you're betraying your own self. And so you're a wounded inner child is not going to trust you. And when you do not speak up over and over and over again, it turns into resentment and all types of mental and emotional imbalances and illnesses, especially autoimmune illnesses, where your own body and immune system starts attacking itself because that's the energetic dynamic you have accepted. That's the energetic dynamic you participate in even when you don't truly feel safe and aligned. And this conversation could go on and on with the way the ways the social constructs religion just being one of them media hip-hop i mean if you grew up in the black community like we really got it the worst like i don't know any other genre of music that what's popular is anything that is putting women down or or using women or treating them like objects where does that come from well in the Bible, fathers sold their daughters to the highest bidder and it was called a diary. Is that not being an object? And they didn't have say so. Sometimes they had just had their period. And not only that, but they had to do it in a tent and be checked afterwards to make sure they bled, to make sure they were virgins. That's traumatic. Can we admit to that? Because if we cannot admit to certain teachings that actually put us in a position to be codependent people pleasers and people who don't feel like they have sovereignty, they don't have choice over what happens with their body. Is it really any wonder why so many generational curses exist today? And as the feminine is healing, awakening, finding her voice and being supported spiritually, we're discovering these things and we're starting to say, no, that doesn't resonate with me anymore. And the downside of this is if your partner has trust issues or insecurities um, or maybe has difficulty connecting with their own feelings and being able to express that in a healthy way, this can turn into a repeated pattern of being desired and that desire turns into resentment when it's not fulfilled. And because women took this on as a duty, a task, a responsibility of another adult, men were also created in a way where they are baby boys and they're like man childs. And it's like, no, this is your responsibility. You signed up for this. How are you going to say no to me and you signed up for this? And the harsh reality is some men will leave you and not want to be with you anymore when the water stops when the milk stopped pouring because you're going inwards and seeking to be whole and heal. And that realization is one that is very painful, but the truth is the only way that we will get free. And I'm sharing this with other people 
who may be afraid to speak about it or may not have the platform of support. So if you listen to me and you resonate with this, like comment below and let me know. And this is not an attack on men. We got enough of that going on. We don't need to be at war with each other, but we do need to come to a place of understanding each other's struggles and traumas.